was asked to do uh, a presentation this evening on how do you get more followers on Twitter. And when I first asked, I thought, oh, that's going to be a bit boring. How do we do that? Um, so what I've done is I've tried to make this a bit more uh, fun and a bit more interactive. So we've only got very limited slides, which you'll be pleased to hear. It's not death by PowerPoint. And what I'm going to do instead is go through the PowerPoint to start with, probably 10 minutes or so, take some questions, and then actually show you all the tools that we're talking about in the PowerPoint. So you can see them in action, see them being used, and I'll welcome anyone that wants to throw some stuff out, and we'll do some stuff that you guys want to see on there, rather than what I want to find. So I'll show you how it works. If you've got suggestions, just uh, shout them out, and we'll go through it. Can I just ask you before we start? Sure. Is the stuff that you're talking about, will there be like next to it online or something? Or I, I'll upload this afterwards, but there will be, we'll do a write-up as well and we'll give it to Worthy Digital. Brilliant. Okay, so to start with, um, just a few questions really. And this is what a lot of clients come to me and ask, uh, no matter whether they're big or small companies. And I know some of you in here will be interested in growing your own following as well. So this is applicable across the board. It's not just for big or small companies, it's for individuals as well. And the questions are these, what are followers and why do I need more of them? How do I get more followers? Uh, how do I find the right followers, which is obviously very important? How do I manage my Twitter followers? And finally, how do I spy on my competitors without them knowing? That's the fun stuff. It's the good, the good fun stuff that we'll get to at the end of the presentation. Um, because there are some really clever ways of doing that, uh, using a number of free tools. It's the word free. Um, so what are followers, and why do you need more of them? Well, the first thing is fairly obvious. Followers are followers that follow you on Twitter. Kind of obvious, but it's all I pointed out anyway. Uh, moreover, followers are those who are uh, interested in what you have to say and what you have to share with them and information, knowledge, links, pages, content. It's a way of educating. That would be Mark Ford tweeting. Or someone from Worthing Digital tweeting. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what followers are, are into on, on Twitter. They want to know what you've got to tell them. And if you're not interested, or you're not interesting, and you're not relevant to them, then they're not going to follow you. Simple as that. So relevancy is really good. Uh, they could, of course, just be a friend already. I mean, plenty of us got a few friends on there, so they tend to follow you. Uh, businesses need more of these for a number of reasons. Um, I put this one in because a lot of people kind of ignore it. and They kind of go, ah, doesn't really matter how many you've got. And it does. So it is an ego boost. Having 500 followers instead of 300 followers, it makes you feel better. And to some companies, that's really, really important. Because it helps them seem like they're bigger, maybe, than they are. So having the numbers does make a difference to their ego. Uh, there's some important social signals in there as well. Is, um, is everyone aware of social search? A deathly silence. <laughs> okay, so social search, effectively, is like the blend of what social media does and what good SEO or search engine optimization does. And it's the blend of those two things. And with the advent of Google Plus in particular, social media signals, so how many followers you've got, how many times you've been retweeted, how many times a page has been shared, those kind of signals are now being fed into Google and Bing, and now have a dramatic effect on the position of those particular pages in the rankings. So the more you get shares, the more retweets, the more likes, more shares, more plus ones, more followers, all of those things combined make it much more powerful content than ever before. And now Google is now starting to show you those results. And particularly if you're logged in. So quick show of hands, who's got a Google Plus account? That's quite a lot of you. Keep your hand up if you use it. <laughs> <laughs> the hardcore three at the back. Well done, men, stick with it. Keep going, believe in it, Google's. keep the faith. <laughs> well, I have, I have. Uh, exclude myself from social search though, because that is an option. Yeah, it is, yeah. So you've done that, have you? Yeah. Not good. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what, what other people say apart from my friends. But yeah. Right. So uh, the thing with Google Plus is this. Um, they've grown it massively over the last 13 or 14 months, and it now has more than 400 million users worldwide. So it's really big now, really powerful. Albeit that there's only an average of 2.2 minutes spent on it a month. That's true figures, by the way. It's not me making them up. It is actually 2.2 minutes a month is the average time spent on the site, so it's not very good from that point of view. But where it's really good from a marketer's point of view is that all those signals are great. They all feed back into Google. What it also does for search engine guys is ruins their life. And the reason it ruins their life is because when you log into Google+, Plus, or you log into your Gmail, or you log into YouTube, or you log into Places, or basically any kind of Google product now, you're logged in on that machine that you use. 
And if you, if you logged in, the very next time you go back to google.com or .co.uk, your search is what we call logged in search. So your search results are very different. And they're influenced by all the different social rankings and all the plus ones and all the likes and what have you. And what you see is different to what we see in the office when we're not logged in. And that makes it harder for search engine guys to actually do the things they've normally been doing to push that up the rankings. And what it does is it makes your social signals much more important. And the analogy I'll give you is the, the guy in the pub. So I'm in the pub, I'm talking to my mate, and I've got an MOT due. And he says, and I say to him, where'd you get your MOT done? And he says, oh, around the corner at Fred's, he's really good. That's a recommendation in a pub from a guy who is actually a dentist. So the recommendation is not all that good, really. But he's a mate, I've known him for a long time, I trust him, he's had a good deal, I'll go around there. Does that happen to any of you? Have you done that kind of thing over the years? Pretty much all of us, I think. And the problem with that is that the recommendation isn't that good because he's not a mechanic. He has no guarantee that what the service I get will be the same he had. We've got different cars. There are different things at play. The guy might not know me, he might know him. There's all sorts of things at play, but it's a decent enough recommendation for me to still go. And Google+, Plus, that's what that's like. So when your friends press the plus one button, and you go back to search for something in Google and you're logged in, their recommendations are starting to come up higher than anyone else's. Because, in theory, you trust their opinion more than you trust the internet. That's a good thing to do. So that's how social signals are affected. So there's a lot of things <coughs> going on right now. Uh, obviously, they want to appear bigger than they are against their competitors. And we've got a number of clients who, uh, one in particular, does glasses. And they're a tiny-ish company. They sell just normal spectacles and they do um, online stuff. They haven't got any shops. And actually, I know they've got one shop now. But they've been around seven years. They started off as a husband and wife in the conservatory. They, they used to both work for different opticians. And they came together and they thought they could do this cheaper. And they're very tiny in, in the real world from the big people like Specsavers and what have you in the high street. But if you go and check them out under the search of glasses on Google, they're quite high. And they appear like they're one of the big players. And because they've got thousands of followers on Twitter, that, that kind of backs it up. Gives people the impression that they are actually a big company. Um, when compared to the others, they're not. Also have a large reach, which again goes back to your social signals. If you've got more people to talk to, then presumably if you share great content, you'll get more shares. They'll share it with other people. Uh, which ultimately means more traffic, which is great. And the final one is trust. Uh, sort of linked to appearing bigger, but just reinforces the fact that I am actually talking to the people I think I'm talking to. Um, Twitter's very bad for it, in that you can land on a page sometimes, you see a logo, you see the name, you think, yeah, that's, that's them, yeah, I'll follow them and I'll talk to them, and then it turns out <coughs> it's nothing to do with the people you think it was. That's really awful. So having large amounts of people and large amounts of followers tends to add a bit more credibility to the account. So with all that in mind, how do you get more followers without upsetting Twitter, birds and the whales? Because uh, they do get a bit upset, uh, particularly if you decide to buy them. You can buy them, I'm not going to hide it from you. Plenty of sites out there, and I'll show you a few in a minute. Uh, well, you can buy them. You can buy 5,000, buy 10,000. I think you can buy 50,000 now. But trust me on this, and I've done lots of tests, they're rubbish. Uh, we did one a couple of months back, we bought 5,000 for a rogue Twitter account. I haven't got anything on it, just wanted to see the effect of what it would do. And within a week, we had 2,600. So it's 2,400 people that were on the account that disappeared. We know where they went. So we lost half. And within a month, we'd gone down to 1,200. And those 1,200, when we checked the relevancy of what we were doing, it was a travel account, there was only less than 1.1% of people that were interested in travel. <laughs> the 1,200 we had left. So what we actually paid for was about seven followers. And that cost us 295 quid a good return. I could probably go and pay people a fiver outside to follow me and they'd be more relevant. And probably still be there if I play it. So they are a bit rubbish, but you can, you can pay for them. Uh, you can beg, it's not cool, but it does work sometimes. Especially when you're quite new to Twitter and you haven't got many friends and you're a bit sad. And you tweet out, you like, please follow me, I won't be mean, I've got lots of great content to share. And some people will be like, oh yeah, I probably should follow. Especially friends. Uh, you can use software that apparently kills birds, according to Twitter. Um, and when I say software, what I'm actually talking about is all the hacky kind of stuff. There's loads out there. Um, I won't mention too many, but TweetAdder is probably the most prominent. Uh, Twitter recently, in the last three months, issued a lawsuit against five of them that weren't going through the API. They were actually breaking all the regulations by doing it differently. 
and uh, using some hacks to get into Twitter the wrong way, and um, do some what they call automated following, which was actually quite fun for a little while. When we were looking at how it worked, we did some tests on it, and it, it was working quite crazy. Um, but they don't like that. They don't want you to do that. Um, so we don't recommend it. Uh, it can work for them, which is a bit boring. You can hire someone to do it for you. Hi. Uh, you can also use tools that comply with the API rules. You know, it's the starburst. I've got to be carried away. Sorry about that. My daughter teaching me new, new fades and things. She's like 13 and a whiz kid on PowerPoint. Uh, so you can use the tools, and we'll show you some of those tools that are actually within the API rules. Um, wow, I really went to town, didn't I? Uh, you can engage properly. In other words, you can talk to people, you can get them on board, you can find like-minded people. You guys, in other words, should all be following each other on Twitter. Maybe not all of you, I don't know. Uh, social directories are really useful. Uh, Nestorius, we follow, Twello, I'm going to show you all these as well. Uh, they're all very useful for growing your following. It's literally you're adding yourself to the yellow pages, saying, hi, I'm into social media, Formula One, marketing, whatever. And then when people go on the site and they start searching for those kind of things, They'll find you. It's really good. Uh, you can also use advertising. So Facebook ads, stumble upon ads, and LinkedIn ads are all very, very powerful. Uh, although I sort of question if you've got a pot of money and you're a business and you want to grow followers very quickly, then ads are really good to do that. I'd rather spend money there than spend money up there. Because you might spend the same amount of money and you might not get 5,000, you might get a couple of hundred. But at least those couple of hundred are relevant. They're focused on what you're talking about because you can make Facebook ads and stumble upon ads, and particularly LinkedIn ads, um, really, really powerful in terms of who you can find. I mean, you can drill right down into finding ridiculous amounts of people. Um, I'll give you a fun example. We were testing about, as we tend to do, when we're playing with social media and testing in the evenings. It's in the normal work time. There's no bosses around anyway. Um, and what we did is we just wanted to kind of figure out what Facebook would give us in the really extreme cases. So what we did is we looked for men, 18 to 65, who liked fly fishing and were interested in women. <laughs> and we found 320 of them. We also found 240 females who were into fly fishing and were looking for men. Now we figured, what a great dating site that would be. <laughs> <laughs> 240 females, 320 men, that's perfect. So you heard it here first, the uh, fly fishing dating stops, it doesn't really come from. Um, but that gives you an example of just how powerful these ads are. You can really find niches all over the place. If you want to find someone who's 25 specifically, lives within 75 miles of Worthing, works at a specific branch of American Express, and is interested in dogs, you can find those people. It's incredible. So imagine what you can do if you want to find like-minded people uh, and, and get them on your Twitter. You can do it through ads. Uh, bottom line of all of this, of course, is that you can get more followers quickly, but you can't do it without reciprocal following, because that's what we're talking about tonight, reciprocal following. The act is that you follow someone and, and encouraging them to follow you back. That's what you're doing, without actually going, hi, I've just followed you, can you follow me back? Because that's, that's sort of begging. It's not cool. Uh, and you can do that up to 2,000 before the ratio kicks in, and then it's 1.5 to 1. So you can only follow 1.5 to the amount of 1 after 2,000. But up to 2,000, you're free to pretty much, you can follow 2,000 people today. I wouldn't recommend it, by the way. Uh, but you can follow 2,000 people right now, and only 10 people can follow you back. And then until you get 2,000, you can't follow any more. But you can manage it, and you can, I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But I wouldn't recommend 2,000 all at once. Kind of weird, and Twitter doesn't really like it. They're a bit fussy, frankly. So the key to new followers, um, this is just some general things that we advise our customers to do when they come to us and they say, right, okay, grow us some more followers. We don't go, yeah, we can give you 10,000, um, pay us five grand, and we'll do that. We don't do that. We actually work with them on producing great content, following some of the right things to do. So post interesting content, post relevant content, and post it to a growing audience and understand who that audience is. So mine's, mine's a pretty diverse Twitter I'm quite sure I get away with it, but mine's sort of social media, photography, Formula One, and a bit of video, video gaming. That's quite wide. So when I start posting about Formula One on a Sunday, all I get from my marketing friends is, shut the hell up about F1. No one likes F1. And I see my followers drop. And then on a Monday, I start tweeting about social media, and I see my followers drop. I'm like, that's weird. But then it goes back up again in midweek when all of them have forgiven me. 
But it, it's about relevancy. It's about posting the right content. So understanding who your audience is, and then making sure that the stuff you're talking about is relevant to them. Of course, it's got to be relevant to you as well. Now, clean up followers regularly. Don't don't let your followers get polluted. People hate seeing that stuff. And I'm talking about spam bots. I'm talking about people with a default egg. Anyone with a default egg on their Twitter account? No one hanging up. Uh, default bios. All that kind of stuff is kind of useless. Just don't follow those kind of people. And if you have followed my mistake or because we've done some automated stuff, just unfollow them this next month when you clean them up. Just do it once a month. It'll take you like 10 minutes a month uh, once you've got up, and, up to speed. What do you mean by default bios? Uh, so when you go onto Twitter, you don't have to fill out a bio and you don't have to fill out, uh, you don't have to add an image. And we call those the eggs because there's a default egg picture and the, the bio is absolutely empty. So you follow them, but all you've got is a name. You've got no image, no biography, so you have no idea what they're into. Kind of pointless to follow them, really. But sometimes they get, they'll follow you, and you'll think, oh, I'll follow them back, just being nice. And then after a while, your limit pick gets hit, 2000. And then you've got all these people in there that you don't know who they are, no bio, don't know what they're talking about, they've got no eggs. So we usually, you know, usually get rid of them. It's quite harsh, quite cutthroat, really. Uh, constantly set Tweepy to follow similar people. Uh, people's followers, that's a bit of a mouthful. I'll explain that in a minute, we'll have a look at Tweepy and some other one of the free tools. Uh, add to social directories, which we've already spoken about. Follow people back within reason. You know, you have to be careful, there's a lot of rubbish out there. Uh, tweet people regularly. Do the hash F, F every week. Uh, everyone know what hash F is? So follow Friday. Hash F, F. Follow Friday. It's like a, I don't know, it's like these people are really cool and I like following these people. You should follow them too. So if you join in with that, you tend to find that other people will then start mentioning you, which then gets you more followers, because they're doing it to their followers. So that's a good way of picking up new people. Uh, and tweet other people regularly as well, talk to them, as if you would do if you're bumping into them in, in a coffee shop or the pub. Retweet people when they post cool stuff. So if you find something in your timeline, you think, actually, that's really awesome, it's a fantastic infographic, hit the retweet button. They'll thank you for it, and when they see it enough times, they'll then see something you've done, and they'll start doing it for you. And that means you reach their followers. Because the thing is with Twitter is you only go to the people that are following you. No one else sees you or hears you. So if you've got five followers, it's the only people who will hear what you say. Unless you use hashtags. Obviously you can reach a few more people. But the best way of doing it is other people retweeting you because it goes to their followers. Interact, debate, argue, engage. It's anarchy out there joining. It's fun. Uh, and use the right software. This is what we're going to show you tonight. Um, some of that software, if you combine them all, is really, really powerful. You don't need to pay a fortune for it. Follow Wonk is free up to a, a limit. I'm going to show you how to use that. Tweepy is also free up to certain limits, but I actually pay for the full version because it's, it's very helpful. And I think that's $14 a month, which, you know, we'll break it down to like 30p a day or something. Uh, Twitter lists, very much overlooked, and yet they're really powerful. Uh, LinkedIn, which you might sort of think, hang on a minute, how do I get followers out of LinkedIn? I'll show you. It's actually a really good tool. And TweetDeck, which is my personal favourite. I kind of get a bit, bit, bit passionate when we talk about TweetDeck, so if I get carried away, please feel free to tell me to shut up. Uh, and it can also turn you into this. Wait for this, you're going to be blown away. You should have some kind of Bond music playing right now. Um, there's a kind of double meme thing going on there. I don't know if you spotted it, but yeah, it's the Kind of Rick Astley thing going, yeah, whatever. I thought it might fall flat. Um, basically, <laughs> what it means is is that you can use all of these tools to be a bit of a super sleuth when it comes to Twitter. And uh, this is really powerful for your competitors, uh, for your uh, companies rather, and finding out what your competitors are doing. So, what I'm going to show you at the end of tonight is how do you follow all of the people that are your rivals without them knowing and figuring it out? It'll be a bit of fun. Uh, and that's the end of the slides. You'll be pleased to know. So you've got any questions before we go on? In terms of Google and Twitter and the importance that Google puts on Twitter or links on Twitter, does it put importance onto that? Because I understood that Google and Twitter fell out in terms of... They did fall out, yeah. They fell out um, about June, July time last year. Mm -hmm. uh, mainly because Google stopped paying for the host mm -hmm. that was on the end of mm -hmm. Twitter pouring into Google, mm -hmm. uh, which stopped what was called real time at the time. Um, and they didn't renew, and Twitter then cottoned on to the fact that actually Google were going to start their own social network, which is kind of why they fell out. Uh, but Google can still index pages, it still picks up pages as well. Okay. So it can pick up them. Um, the links inside Twitter are no follow anyway. So they're not as powerful, but when you talk about links overall, they're part of the whole profile. 
So in a natural looking link profile, you would have some nofollow links, some social links, some follow links, some high authority links, some low authority links. That's a natural portfolio. Uh, if you haven't got that, Google sends you a nasty, uh, nasty email now and says that doesn't look natural to us and we're going to penalise you and drop you 30 places. Okay, so some of the tools. So I'm going to start with Follow Wonk. Um, Followawonk.com, really weird name. Uh, recently bought by SEO Moz, our good friends at SEO Moz. I was a bit worried for a while because I thought, mm, I hope they don't ruin it because it's actually a really cool tool, but they have, they've improved it, which is great. Um, there is a paid version of this. I'm not going to show you that tonight because we don't need it for what we're doing. Um, it has some really cool stuff though, so I will show you a couple of things. Like, uh, actually, I've got, I think I've got a report in here which I can show you because it takes a little while to generate these. So, let me go and have a look at this one. I ran this this afternoon so I wouldn't have to do one tonight. Yeah, it works. Okay. This is actually really quite cool. So what it does is it goes in, has a look at all of your followers, and tells you where they are in the world. It's quite pretty, but it's also very useful because you can actually go right into these and find out where they are in terms of city and locations as well. I was quite disturbed that I've got quite a few Asian people following me. <laughs> it's quite odd. There's a lot of people in India and Thailand, which worries me slightly. Um, but it's, it's interesting to find out where, where your followers are from. Because you can then figure out, am I, am I talking to the right people? Do I need to follow these people back? Are they influential? And you can go right in as well. So if we go right into the UK, it will start breaking it down by city as well. So I can actually see that actually the concentration of most of the people that follow me are, well, lo and behold, where I live. Um, but it's, you can go right in as well. And most of it's London. Uh, there's only four people in Worthing. That's quite sad. <laughs> oh, that's not happy. Four people. Uh, but 62 in Brighton. Right. And two in Eastbourne. They're obviously bored in the evenings. Um, but it's quite cool. It's quite a nice way of um, looking at who you've got following you and uh, where they come from and figuring out what you should talk to them about. Is that free to them? Yeah, that one's free. That one, um, the follow-on is actually free to use on that page and you get free reports as well. Uh, but some of the more advanced things you have to pay for. But that one's free. You can actually get them to run that and you can save it and do what you want. I think actually things like they still got the export on this page? No. If I think when you log in and you pay, you can download these as Excel spreadsheets with all the numbers in, which is actually very useful when you want to do your own sort of data sorting on it. And but down further and down from the map is some also interesting things because it breaks it down for you. So you can actually see of the 0 to 100 score, SEO must have like an influence score. It's measured on all sorts of things like how much you share and tweet, who does that for you. Uh, 100 being the high. You can then figure out what the value of the people that are following you is to figure out should you follow them back, should you interact with them. So that's very useful. You can see I've only got two people that are over 90. Uh, I have no clue who they are, which is very bad of me. Um, but the majority of mine are sort of, I don't know, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, which is their reasonable scores. Anything, anything above 50 is considered pretty good. Uh, and then we've got some subscribers only stuff, which we'll ignore for now, but that's gender related. Um, but then there's also follow accounts, so it will tell you, um, you know, how many other, how many of the people that are following me, how many followers they've got. Which again, there's another measurement of how powerful are these people are. They people want to, want to interact with. What are they talking about? Can I get them to talk to me? Because if I can, and they can retweet something to their million plus followers, yay! I get loads of followers. It really does work. Can you not work at find out who that is? Though? Yeah, you can go back in and you can you can do the paid version. You can find exactly who the people are and then you can start interacting with them. Right, that's good. Really yeah, that's the paid stuff. Okay. Yeah, which we're not going to do tonight. I'm just going to show you some of the cool features that they've got. Um, that's the other one, which is followers, and then we've got ages as well. So they've entered their ages. You can figure out where your age range is in, and how old the account is, not how old they are, because obviously they'd be quite young. <laughs> Very good. Four hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. A few babies following me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three embryos following me this year. Recency, so how often they tweet, when they've tweeted, and when are they. So I've actually got, this is a really interesting page actually, because I've got 5.2% of all the people that follow me have never tweeted. What the hell? Why are they not tweeting? Well, they're obviously listeners. They could be listeners. That'll be your competitors trying to find out about you. Could be. I haven't learned how to spy. <laughs> Could well be. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, but it's got lots and lots of other stuff in here. It's like look at the language stuff. It's crazy amount of language stuff in here. Uh, 636 Japanese. 8% of my followers are Japanese. Or speak Japanese. 
or speak Japanese. I have no idea how or why. <laughs> Uh, I might have to do some work after this, <laughs> kind of shut myself up here. Uh, it also gives you an idea of what I tweet about and what they tweet about as well. So it mashes all that together into the, the word cloud and then gives you an idea of actually which topics am I, am I supposed to be talking about? Which, which, do the, which do the people that follow me talk about? What do they talk about? And luckily for me, is social, marketing. There's no F1. Love. There is no F1. Um, media, esports, gaming, gaming, SEO, uh, StarCraft. Yeah. Uh, but there's no F1, which is interesting. Starcraft? Yeah. Starcraft, yeah, so a video game. <laughs> it is a good game as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it, it kind of allows you to figure out are you in the right niche? Do you have the right followers? And it's alright, I'm a nerd, I can admit it. It's fine. Um, yeah, and then and it gives you an idea of whether you're actually talking about the right stuff. So, very useful page. Very, very useful page. Uh, and that's on the analyze followers. Uh, you can also compare people, you can track people, you can sort them. But these are all paid areas, so we're not going to go into that. The one we're going to use is searching Twitter bios. If you click on more options as well, you get a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you an example, and then you guys can throw some examples out. We'll try and find some people. Uh, so if I want to do a search for a journalist, and I want to do it in the UK, what Follow Wonk will do is filter all of Twitter into only journalists from the UK. And then it'll filter them for me based on how many followers they're following. But I can also then take that away and I can go by influence. So there's two things you can do with these people. Um, you can follow them. That's one thing you can do. Um, but what I actually then do is steal their name. So for instance, if I match up to this guy, for instance, I'm going to steal his Twitter name because he's got lots of people following. But he's also following a lot of people, which is a weird ratio to have. So maybe he's not that good. So let's take Andrea instead. And this is a, this is a kind of mix of the two um, programs, Tweepy and Follow Along. So what I'm trying to do in here is I'm trying to find someone who's similar to me. And in this case, not a journalist, but we can find someone that's similar to me. Because what I really want to do is I want to get into contact with people that are also in contact with similar people to me. And if they already have the followers, then that's half the work done. Because in theory, if you're similar to someone or a similar brand, then the people that are following them should want to follow you too, if you're tweeting about similar things. That's the theory behind it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take one of these names, and we'll do a few tests in a minute with a few things you shout out, and then we'll put them into Tweepy and see if we can find people that we then want to follow. And let Tweepy do the hard work for us instead of us doing it. So has anyone got any um, particular job titles or areas or niches or a museum curator and what a museum curator okay i, I would say I, I work in a museum so okay. I'm very interested in trying to sell stuff to them so I'll be very a museum curator in, in the uk uh yeah. yeah yeah okay less is more by the way when you put in these searches okay so we're going to fail with one fail to museum curator <laughs> it's almost like I planted him in the room for that, wasn't it? Why did you put that as your friends? However, he has 3,400 followers, which is pretty decent. That's all right. He's quite active. His influence is 64, so that's pretty decent. He's, uh, his account is 1,639 days old, so he's about four years into his uh, Twitter lifestyle, which is good. Uh, solid amount of tweets, decent amount of followers. Yeah, he looks pretty good. So I think if we were looking for someone like that and his bio stacks up, yeah, he's an environmental archaeologist. Is that kind of what you were looking for, maybe? Not at all, but let's pretend no. it is. All right, is. <laughs> let's pretend it is. Uh, so let's take his name, his Twitter name. This mouse is very sensitive, by the way, so apologies for that. And then we'll go to Tweepy. Now, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to Tweepy. So this is the premium version, which is the $14 one. I've, I've got the account up and running, so it's kind of pointless showing you the unpaid version. It just doesn't do enough, OK? But there are some freebies in it. Things like Flush, uh, Reciprocate, and Clean Up are all free. You can do that. You can do that on the free one. You just sign in with your Twitter account, and you pay for it via a tweet. One tweet, I mean. And the great thing is, the funny thing is, when you pay for the tweet, you can actually um, remove all the words they've put and just put a full stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then people retweet it weirdly. What's that one about? Um, so on here, you've got a lot of different um, things that you can do. Um, we'll cover some of these, not all of them. We won't have time to cover all of them, but we'll cover some of them. Um, but the one that we want to do is follow followers. So basically, we've already got the at user's name from the previous tool. We know that's what we want to do. 
So we're going to go ahead and follow followers. And we're going to paste that in there. And don't worry, it doesn't start following. First time that happened, I was kind of like, oh no, I don't. There's like five million people, I don't want to follow them. Uh, it actually gives you the list. And then lets you have control of who you follow. So what we've now got, what it's done for us, it's gone back into this zoo archaeologist person, found 3,427 followers, who in theory might loosely be related to this chap in terms of why they're following him over his subject matter, that we then want to get to follow us because we're similar. That's the theory behind it. And then it's literally about going through them. And you've got a couple of hundred on each page, and all you do is literally click on them. Yeah, on that one, on that one, on that one, and on that one. Can you get the bios up and stuff like Yeah, you can look at bios, you can go back into them, you can load them up, you can put them on special lists, you can do all sorts. Very, very flexible piece of software. But once you've done it all, the great thing is it will just do it all for you. And it will do it within the API limits. So you haven't got to worry about sitting there going, I've got to follow this guy, wait for Twitter, follow this guy, wait for Twitter. You haven't got to do that, it will just do that all for you. It takes all the hard work out of following. And we'll do this, if we're working with a client, we'll do this once a week, for maybe an hour. And that's good enough sometimes for maybe two, 250 people. And out of those, we'll have a success ratio of about 45%. So you should be getting about 100, 125 people every week if you're following 250. <coughs> Pretty decent. So how do you verify which is a good candidate? Well, you don't have to start with because it's about numbers. But you're trying to find, in theory, what you're saying is, is that the person we've, we've attacked, as it were, is the same as us, similar to us. Therefore, the people following them, in theory, should be interested in what they say. So there's a theory base behind it, right. which is when we come back to this, and I'll show you some of the other options that you can use, because that's when you start unfollowing people as well. So you're harvesting people? Basically. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. Like an it sounds quite bad, but yes. It's like an <laughs> intelligent sort of halfway between going and individually checking yes. each thing and that's it forever and just randomly following. Together. Absolutely right. Yeah, this isn't like massively scientific, but it is a halfway house of uh, kind of like a trade-off of how long it takes you to do that if you want to do it individually. And how quickly you can do it if you want to buy it. It's, it's the sort of halfway house. Harvesting people though, it's awful. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to come back out of that and just show you a few of the other uh, little bits in Tweepy. It's a magnificent set of tools for managing. And when you get into this and you kind of get a regular cycle going, you'll spend maybe a couple of hours on this a week if you're really serious about growing followers. Uh, if not, a quarter of an hour will do. Half an hour will do. And you'll find that your Twitter followers will start going up. It's about reciprocal followers. Uh, as you get more experience with it, what you can start to do is you can start using Flush. Um, now, according to that, it says that I'm following 139 tweeps, harvested people, who are not following me back. Well, that's a bit mean. So I'm following 139 people that aren't following me back, so why the hell not? Well, let's find out. So, you click on Flush, it doesn't do anything, by the way. It really used to scare me that it was going to do some stuff. And I'm going, oh! Uh, but it doesn't. It gives you the list first. So, it will give me the list of all the people I'm following, that are not following me back, okay? And what I can do is I can sort them by clout score. Is everyone familiar with clout? Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of become, I hate saying de facto because it's not, there's a few others, but it's sort of accepted as a reasonable, wild stab in the dark at how good you are at social media. That's reasonably fair. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's okay, it's a good measurement tool. It tells you how popular someone is, how much credibility they've got, how, how influential they are, by a score of 1 to 100 or 0 to 100. So it gives you an idea, in a, you know, tying it back into the science side of it, to making this a bit more scientific, but still not brilliant. Um, so what I do is I tend to sort them by cloud score. And as you can see, I'm following four people here who have an NA, which means they're not on cloud and they're not being picked up. So there's a number of reasons for that, but I'm not going to bore you with them. We'll ignore that for now, especially as I'm following Lord Voldemort and he's not following me back. <laughs> Which frankly is a bit me. What did I do? Uh, so I'm following uh, Miss Jo Ross, um, and I followed her 20 days ago, and she's got a clout score of 12.35, and she's only got 10 followers. Now, I'm just so happy that Jo works at Freshie, which is why I followed her. That's quite mean. I'm going to take this up with her tomorrow, because she really should be following me back, it's a bit mean. Um, in theory, if I didn't know who she was, right now, I'd be looking at clout score and going, yeah, I probably should be following her. Probably just ditch her. Some half some people after all. Uh, so I might get rid of her. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm not me. But it, that's that's the kind of theory you're looking at. Um, I'm following Jesus Christ, and again, I'm not following back. I mean, <laughs> what the hell is going on? He hasn't got many followers compared no, to Jesus. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's been a bit of trouble, apparently. Um, McLaren Jobs. So yeah, I was uh, looking at some McLaren Jobs. Whoops. 
Ah. So for Jesus Christ, where is 28.63? Yeah, he's not very influential. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking some rules here about religion and don't tell me about religion and stuff, so I'll move on quickly. Um, yeah, the school was... Well, Lord Voldemort's uh, a lot okay. more popular, isn't he? What's that? <laughs> Lord Voldemort's a lot more popular. Yeah, yeah, but Lord Voldemort, he hasn't got any school at all. Now, you'll also know that some of these are uh, greened out, and that's because I've put them on my safe list. So Tweepy allows you to add people that you don't ever want to get rid of, even if they don't follow you back. Because there are people I enjoy following. I enjoy following Lord Voldemort. He's very funny. Very seriously. Watch his tweets, they're so hilarious. Uh, he's like a parody account. Which is why he's got 2.2 million people. And I don't mind these, I'm following that, so that's cool. And you'll always follow a few people you actually want to follow, you're not looking for that reciprocal follow. So that's okay. Leave them on there, put them on the safe list. And then you won't accidentally go, yeah, flush all them. Oh no! Just flushed all my favourite people. Whoops. Uh, and so if I do that, it won't let me. It won't let me flush those away. So that's good. They're protected. Uh, let's go down a little bit further. Um, yeah, I mean, most of these people, I know them or I've got some sort of connection to them in some way. They're either a, a gaming team or <coughs> something to do with gaming. So that's okay. I'm pretty okay with that. And, and to be honest, you know, 130 people not following back is not that bad. Yeah, exactly. It's not that bad at all. So that's, that's all right. I'm okay with that. Um, it then tells me that I've got 7,300 tweets who are following me, but I'm not following back. But I don't care about it. Uh, it then says, is your Twitter stream getting crowded with tweets? No, it's not. Um, even though I'm following 506 users, but that's fine. But you can clean it up. So if you've got a few in that you're following, you think, oh, hang on, why am I following them? See all these spam tweets, I don't want them anymore. You can go and clean them up through that as well. Uh, what else have we got down here? So you can follow followers, which we've shown you. You can also follow friends, which is fine. It's just the same as doing it normally. Uh, follow lists is quite useful, but you can do that on Twitter as well. Paste and analyze is quite a good one. So you can actually put a comma-separated list of people of their um, usernames and there are lots of software out there that you can find um, it's against the rules of Twitter so I can't really show you but there is software if you look hard enough you'll find it and they will actually extract all of the usernames into a CSV file for you and then you can upload it to this and it will then just put them in a table and you can see all their scores how many followers they've got which is quite useful uh, and then lastly I'll just, these last couple down here you can only follow users who haven't tweeted in the last X amount of days which is brilliant, by the way. Usually, and this is the cunning little trick, um, I set that to 180 days. And the reason for that is that if they haven't tweeted for six months and you unfollow them, they're not going to unfollow you. <laughs> brilliant. So you'll still keep the follower, so your numbers will be nice and high, but actually, they're never going to unfollow you because they haven't used Twitter in six months. They don't even care. So great, unfollow them quietly. Uh, you can also then unfollow people that you followed using Tweepy, but actually then they haven't followed you back after 30 days, you might go, nah, well, well it was worth a try. I didn't get a response. After we said earlier, only 40, 45% is what you get back, which leaves you 50% that actually you're gonna be in there that you don't want to follow anymore. And 30 days is about right for people to follow you back. But if you were following somebody who was quite influential. Yeah. Or well that's different, you'd add them to your safe list. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, and you can also clean up via clout score as well. So if you decide actually, I'm going to be really mean, and anyone who hasn't got my minimum expected clout score of 30, you're gone. And you're ditchable. So you can be really mean. I don't tell you to use that one, because it's, it's very mean. How's the clout score calculated? Uh, <laughs> we're up time for that tonight. I mean, seriously, that's probably a whole presentation in its own right. It's a pretty weird thing. But go to cloud.com and read up on the different things. But it's a mixture of sentiment, engagement, our followers, retweets, all sorts of kind of things that are put into their algorithm. It's just on Twitter, though? Uh, no, it's uh, across, a, I think it's about eight or nine different social media platforms. They pull it all in from different platforms. Seems to pick up bad stuff that you say as well as good, though. Yes. Yeah. So I might have been saying something bad a lot of times about a certain CMS or something, yeah. and then it decides that I'm an influence. <clears throat> yes, it does. Yeah. It? Um, when so, don't I've just been saying bad. Probably things. racking up the uh, and I'm like panicking about his error. No. All right. Good. Um, so yeah, funny story about that. I did um, do a competition last year for a car company, and um, Justin Bieber <coughs> had crashed his Ferrari. So we did a little quick competition, which was one, you know, at the end of TV shows, like, which of these wasn't James Bond? And it would be like, you know, Roger Moore, Sean Connery, Raquel Welsh. <laughs> it's those kind of easy to enter competitions. So we did one of them, and it was, you know, which car did Justin Bieber recently crash? And it was Skoda, was it a Lada, or was it a Ferrari? Uh, and believe it or not, three people got that wrong. 
Um, it's a different story altogether. And unfortunately, what I did is, because I put it out through my Twitter account, inadvertently by the way, into our Justin Bieber competition, retweet this to win. Oh shit. I got like 400 retweets. And Clout said, you're influential in Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> and for a whole year as well. It's only just fallen off in the last month. I finally no longer am I influential in this way. Uh, so yeah, be careful what you tweet, because Clout knows and Clout will find you. Uh, Sorry, so that's a mixture of follow along and tweet people. So on that basis, I mean, like, yeah. there was a stage when I was having a, a week when I was organising beers and pizzas with friends on Twitter. Right? Right. And my clout store just went massive on beer and pizza. Right. I'm very influential. <laughs> so on that basis, right, that and surprise you me. being superb on Justin Bieber, yeah. why do people put such an influence on clout? Um, yeah. I think because we don't really have much else. There's one? Peer Index and there's Fred. Yeah. And yeah. they're both kind of up and coming. So I used to like Peer Index more. Um, yeah. It's just difficult to work. No one's figured out. Like we've got Google Analytics to work out where you get traffic from, and there's a few others, but generally speaking, that's it. Um, with social media, we haven't really figured out what's important it's, to measure yet. It's just the one, basically. That's around at the moment. Kind of. I mean, there's yeah. Craig. Go and check out Craig's quite good. Mm. Uh, and Pyrenex is the other one. They're the three main kind of free measuring scoring systems. Cool. Uh, you can't be a really well-paid app like you know, Brandwatch, for instance, or Radio Six, something like that. They're much more powerful than you pay a lot of money for. But these are good for a free lease. Sure, uh, okay, so that's those two, uh, which is Follow Walk, weird name, and Tweety, also a weird name. Uh, what I'm also going to show you is, um, yeah, I've kind of ignored some messages in LinkedIn. Uh, ignore that. Uh, it's bad, isn't it? A really bad night. Um, LinkedIn and how you can use it to find people. Um, LinkedIn are a bit of a pain, actually, unless you pay for premium. They sometimes don't let you know who the people are that you're looking at. They don't reveal their surname. Have you seen that? So there's a cheat for it. Can we do a show? Yeah. No. Um, so what we can do is, and this, I do this a lot, actually, when we're doing um, outreach for our clients and we want to hook them up blog, blog writers or journalists or whatever, and we'll look at, I don't know, let's, let's use, um, I think now, what have we got? Let's do Mirror Group. Oh, let's try to spell it properly. Uh, what have you got? So, newspapers, Trinity Mirror Group. They've got 5,001 uh, employees, and what we're going to do is going to go to their page and we're going to go and see what they've got in terms of employees, which is down here. And then, what I want to find, I can also use the advanced search as well, but you don't really need to find it. You can just literally go through here uh, and find a few people. So, there's a good bloke. He's head of sports sponsorship. Brilliant. And he's called Christopher D. Well, that's not very helpful. How the hell am I going to find him anywhere? So here's the trick. Copy that. Open Google. It's bizarre how this works as well. You type in that, and then you type in his what he's actually got right there. So it's Christopher D. And hopefully... open this one up. We can then, in theory, potentially find him if his name's that, but I don't know if it is. Let's try it the other way around. Sometimes it works better if you switch the name out and put it over at the start. Uh, not really working on that one. It's a little haphazard because they don't always put them in. So what we'll also then do is add mirror and his name is Chris Dehaney. Thanks Google. Uh, so what I then do is go to twitter.com and we search for Miss Chris Dehaney. Uh, Twitter's usually really bad at this sort of stuff so we might not find him in here. This one. Let's have a look. I'm thinking that might not be too uh, Interesting. Well, you can also use, well, you can find him on Twitter, but he might not have a Twitter account. I mean, that's the other thing. We just get unlucky with that. Sort of law, isn't it? Uh, so let's do. But 
Interestingly. <laughs> oh look, LinkedIn's told us his surname now. <laughs> Shalkara. Uh, so you can connect him on LinkedIn. Brilliant, we found him. So we can connect him when we start talking to him. And yet, before, LinkedIn actually didn't tell us his name. It's weird, isn't it? Google actually indexes the page when your full profile is live. But it doesn't reveal it to you if you're a LinkedIn member unless you're a premium member. It's, they're trying to get your money out of you. No, but you don't need to. <laughs> so we found out who the head of sports sponsorship is at the Mirror Group. He's called Christopher Dehaney. And I can now connect to him on Twitter, uh, on LinkedIn. I can start talking to him and chatting to him. Sometimes they'll also have their Twitter handle. A few of you have probably got Twitter handles on LinkedIn. I know I have. So you can find them that way as well. If he has a Twitter account, it's probably a little hard to find. You can use Twitter search and you can use Google. Just add the appendix of Twitter on the end and you'll find these people. And you can do that with everyone. You can start following these people and interacting with them and engaging with them. And after a while, they kind of see you retweeting a few bits and you start chatting with them and commenting on stories they've posted. And you'll be amazed at how quickly they follow you back and start doing stuff for you as well. Uh, I recently had one with the Metro. Um, we've got a bit of a battle going on with a few other digital agencies for commenting on social media stories in the news. And uh, we don't do enough. We've been, I've been told I've got to do more. So I started hooking up with a, a couple of people from the Metro. They run social media stories every week. You see them all the time. And we never get to comment on them. Uh, just gently found a few people in LinkedIn, started connecting with them on Twitter. They then started following me back, started interacting a little bit. After about four weeks, I said to this lady, she's a really nice lady, and I said to her, next time you get a Metro story, just give me a shout, I'm happy to comment for you. She writes back, yeah, no problem, but I work for the Chinese star now. Oh, in Shanghai. Brilliant. Four weeks of outreach down the drain. Oh, well. So yeah, LinkedIn, you can find people in um, really useful people that you can then add to LinkedIn. So that's much more of your high quality stuff that you mix in with all the other bits and pieces that you're doing in the background. Uh, you can also use directories. I uh, mentioned this earlier. So we follow is one of them. There are three that I use. Uh, we follow, Listorius, and Twello are the three. Uh, all with varying uh, success. If you want to find Justin Bieber, he's on there. That's one. <laughs> Uh, Katy Perry and all the rest of the celebrities are in there. But these, these things are quite nice because you can actually add tags. So for instance, if we want to find someone in social media, uh, what? One from my family. Indeed. Okay. Uh, do I do? Uh, that's why I used a gap. They use tags. So they're using hashtags that are based on Twitter as well. Uh, and then it'll give me a list of all these. Um, they're not always all that useful. Like social media, you kind of go, yeah, all right, YouTube. Okay, no boot, Mashable, yeah, brilliant. MC Hammer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Metro TV, Zappos, yeah, and then just some odd people in there. Just like, oh, okay, that's not really what I wanted. Uh, but you can drill drill through this really quite easily and find who you want to find. Uh, the better, the, the more niche search you find, you're more likely to come up. So when you add yourselves to these, you can usually sign in with Twitter and just add yourself, pay, pay by a tweet. That again, has got the hack where if you delete it all and put a dot, that works as well. Um, do it up here. Um, and you can add yourself to these, which is then, you know, if you're in specific niches and there aren't that many people in your niche, you'll come up quite highly. And you'll be surprised by how many followers you get from that as well. Social media, adding myself to this list, oh, I'm probably not going to get any followers either. Um, so yeah, so that's what we follow. Uh, Twello is another one, very similar kind of thing. Uh, you can also do this based on uh, location as well. So if we do social media, so there's 11,966 in there. Uh, it says it's showing results for Worthing, but it really isn't. Uh, but again, these are the biggies. It's quite a lot in there. Again, works better on a smaller niche. And finally, Listorius, which allegedly has got about 2.5 million people in it. Um, and again, you can add yourself to these as well. These are much better because there's all sorts of different levels of um, stuff to find here. So, for instance, if I do boy one, uh, I can actually then find all the biggest people in Formula One, which are most of them are the drivers, which is fantastic because I can create awesome lists then of just my favourite Formula One drivers and put them all in one list and follow them and have them in a list separately to my main uh, account, which really irritates people, by the way, if you do that, because you don't actually follow them, you just put them in a list. Uh, but they're, they're all in there. It's very, very um, there's a lot of stuff on here, 40 pages. So that's those three. And that was pretty much it, apart from the super sleuth stuff. So let's do the super sleuth stuff. It's not really that super sleuth. Um, do many of you use TweetDeck? Used to. Okay. 
Yeah, TweetDeck's really good. Hootsuite you can do it with sort of as well. Um, I just prefer TweetDeck, it's just a personal preference. Um, but you can also do this the same way because it's mostly using lists. Uh, so with um, TweetDeck, this is the web based version obviously in Chrome, uh, I usually use the desktop, but it wouldn't install tonight. Um, what you're doing is creating a custom column. Okay? So, adding a column by here and adding a custom column. But before we do that, what we actually want to do is create a very private list. The great thing about lists on Twitter, and these, this is the same in TweetDeck as Hootsuite, you can do the same thing, um, is that you can then create it privately and add whoever the hell you want on there. And you don't have to follow them. And then once you've added them to that list, you then add a custom column and it then shows you all their tweets. Perfect. So you can follow all your competitors without them knowing you're following them and still keep tabs on them as to what they're doing. It's really good for spotting strategy. It's really good for seeing patterns, trends, seeing who they're following as well. It's quite powerful. So we'll create one right now and we'll do that on mine. Uh, we'll just call it test and work. Oh, so I need to delete it afterwards. Uh, we'll do all oh, these sucks. <laughs> now we'll make it private so he doesn't get embarrassed. Uh, and it's got no members on it right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and find some members. Now, if we go back to what we're using with the other tools, this is where it becomes really powerful. Because what you can do is you can use a mixture of follow log, a mixture of Tweepy, and a mixture of LinkedIn to find some really highly influential people that are in your niche that you want to spy on, but you don't want to follow them because you don't want to waste the followers, because you know, you're harvesting people. So we don't want to waste them, we just want to follow them and see what they're doing. So we can add them into these lists, and we can add as many as we like. And make this as busy as you like. I reckon probably no more than about 150, otherwise this column just goes nuts, and you just can't keep up. It's crazy. It's about 150. I've got 500 in there, look at it. It's just it's a mess. Uh, so, what we can do is go back to our uh, people searches. So if I want to make a Formula 1 one, for instance, then I can, I can do this on here, I can follow him, but I don't really want to do that. What I actually want to do is pick out his, uh, his, his nickname, his actual name on uh, Twitter, uh, which I'm, oh, I'm on the wrong one, that's why. Uh, where do we go? So I do Formula 1 in here, uh, and I want to do UK. Okay, so I can go through here and I can pick out, so if I want Fernando and Monson on my list, what I can do is, well it's so sensitive isn't it, copy that out, go back to TweetDeck, paste it in here, hit enter, and it pops up, and all the other stuff will pop up as well, so I'm going to add him into our, our list, he's done, and then there's all the fakes, how many fakes have they got? Seriously? That's, that's ridiculous how many fakes, fake Alonso's they are. Uh, let's go back again. Uh, you can use all sorts of different things. Um, if you've got a particular one that you prefer, as the main account, then you can use them. It's no different. All you're trying to do is just get these accounts into your list. And it gets quite quick once you get good at it as well. So if you do like, like that, you can then do Sky Sports. I'll do that one. Selva, Total, Mark Weather. What, who's up there? Bernie. Was he really? No. I don't think he was up there, was he? I don't think he's on Twitter, actually. Uh, Jensen Button, Lotus F1 team. So it's, it's starting to learn what I'm looking for by the types of queries that I'm putting in. So I've now got a nice few members on there, that's fantastic. Uh, make sure that's ticked to the bottom, add column. You can also add the column later on, I'll show you how to add it manually. And then click done. And then you get your, brilliant, I've got my column up now. And it's going to live tweet to me. It's been a couple of hours since any of those people have tweeted, but it's given me everything they've done today already. I can review that, I can look through it, I can delete them, I can reply, I can retweet. Um, and for now, forevermore, as long as I've got that column in there, I can get that competitor stuff. Great thing is, I can also get rid of this column, remove it, and then if I go, oh actually, no, I did want that column. Just go back to add column, go to list, and it will then list all of your stuff in here, and you'll see it with a padlock on it. So, uh, what have we got? I've created a oh, there we go. I should have known by the 40 sucks. Uh, and then add it back in, and that's that's cool. And then you're done. 
Does and you can also edit it at any time and add people and remove people as well. Does it ever leave that area? No. It's, once it's done, it's in Twitter. So even if you created it in TweetDeck and then you went to Hootsuite, it will still be there because it's actually in the, it's inside Twitter's API. You create it on your Twitter account, even though you use TweetDeck to do it. So it's perfectly safe. That's how to spy on the enemy. And that's pretty much it, unless anyone's got any questions. Cool. Okay. Go do some spying. How, um, how important is it to make your Twitter account uh, focused? How is it a good idea it? to mix um, business and pleasure and all no, that sort of question. stuff? I mean, some people do different accounts. I'm yeah. on the verge of actually thinking I probably ought to split mine up a bit because I've got probably half are in social media and digital marketing and half are kind of yeah. people I've met and friends, video gaming and stuff, and it's pretty nerdy. And they're very different kind of people. And they do get upset with me. When I start tweeting about four and one or something, people, there are, well, I do get a few tweets, I'm like, please shut up. Oh, okay, maybe I'll to split them up. So yeah, sometimes it does mean you split them. Mm. You know, different accounts, different Yeah, I, I've split them, but it yeah. sort of makes them all work as well. Yeah, so. it does, but use, use TweetDeck. It's much easier to manage them. Yeah, like you can have multiple tweet, accounts for posting, reason. you can have different columns, you can have mm -hmm. different mentions, you can blend them. Custom columns are awesome in tweet deck. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's why we do. Yeah. Uh, we're managing, Christ, I don't know how many in here, uh, we have a, uh, quite a lot of accounts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, I wouldn't be able to do it if I hadn't got tweet deck. It would drive me nuts trying to find all those accounts. Paul, I was yeah, just wondering, a quick question. Yeah. I've got my client database. Yeah. I find them on social, can I use email addresses and find their Twitter mm, Yes. Yes. Is there a tool you can suggest for that? Um, I think. I could be wrong, and they might have removed it because I know Twitter were getting a bit angry with this, but they did used to do one. Uh, in your profile? Under who's following? Um, I don't think so. I think it was under. No, it was on this one. No. Yeah, they may have removed. There was there was something we used a little while back. I don't know if it was in the Twitter thing or not. I mean, we don't we don't use much, so there isn't anything I can really think of the top of my head. But there's bound to be that. I mean, you know when they say there's an app for it on the iPhone? Twitter's pretty much like that. There's over 100,000 apps out there now, just for Twitter. There's probably one out there. I'm sorry, I can't be more helpful. I'll do some digging. Sorry? I'll do some digging. I'll see what I'll do. You'll find one, for sure. With, 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 maybe with your clients who you're trying to grow Twitter followers for, yes. they're following a lot of people. Yeah. Is, is there like a minimum number? You know, because I follow 350 odd people, and I still find I can't keep up with that. So, yeah, if you're... Uh, okay, so that's a, that's a really good question. And that's where TweetDeck really comes into its own. So uh, what happens is, is when you start following like thousands of people, this first column just goes completely crazy. And you, you, you almost get throttled because it's just, just too much. The key is delete the column. And I know that sounds obvious, but just delete it. You don't need to see all of the people's tweets. And then what you do is you create a list of the people you do want to see the tweets for. And then you put the column in there. So I didn't do it at all in there. Um, like, a B, yeah. so you, like a VIP list or something. Absolutely, yeah. I've, I've actually got, I think it's called Friends and Family or something, is the list I've created. And it's got about 200 people on it. Uh, and it's just the 200 people that I wanted to see. And when I was following lots of people, it was crazy. And you just couldn't keep up. So I just deleted the home one and then just filter it by list. Uh, as I've got better at it, I've, I've followed less and less people. And I've managed to keep the ratio high. So like, it's not quite as bad anymore. I can usually get away with the home thing just about. Yeah, it's a good, good thing to do. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say, you know, it's great. I'm, I'm totally with you. I'm building up the numbers. Yeah. At the end of the day, what we all do is go, I can't read what 20,000.